Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. You'll often hear me say on the channel that a retinol is an essential part of an anti-aging skincare routine. Vitamin A derivatives can offer so many great benefits from boosting collagen and elastin production in the skin, minimizing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, resurfacing and smoothing the complexion, and also helping to fade and tackle hyperpigmentation. However, not all retinol serums are created equal, and if you're looking for an over-the-counter retinol for your own skincare routine, I want to take the mystery out of it by ranking some of the most popular ones on the market. Of course we're going to bring out Tear Maker for the occasion. We've got three different categories. We've got Age to Perfection. This is the top tier retinols that honestly will add maximum benefit to just about everyone's skincare routine. The mid tier is going to be okay for some. These are the retinols that will work for some people but maybe it's a little bit more situational. Then the bottom category, the wah, 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 total fails, is called Retinol Ridiculousness. These are the products that honestly you should just avoid. Save your hard earned coin and avoid splurging on. I want you to sit back, relax as we rank some retinols. Now, as always in this video, I say these are my thoughts, feelings, and opinions when it comes to retinols. I have tried all of the ones that I mentioned in today's video and put them through their paces, but you guys might have a different opinion of them to me, and that's absolutely fine. Just sound off in the comment section below and let me know what your thoughts are on anything mentioned today. Just promise me that whilst you're down there, you'll also give this video a big thumbs up and a like. It's just one small way that you can support me in the channel, and honestly, for each and every one of you that always likes the video, or leaves a comment thank you from the bottom of my heart and I love you forever. Now without further ado shall we cut the waffle and delve straight on in. First out of the gate you know I want to get out my absolute favourite because this will come as no surprise. This is the Geek and Gorgeous A Game 10. You guys are probably bored with me mentioning this on the channel but honestly it's just the best of the best when it comes to retinoids. Now this is retinal which means it's a slightly higher potency higher strength version of retinol and normally a retinal will come with a higher price point. Not this product, $15, 12 pounds, doesn't need to break the bank and delivers maximum anti-aging benefits. This is going firmly into the age to perfection category. And honestly, if you haven't tried this product out yet, definitely, definitely one to give a go to. They do two different strengths, the A-Game 5 and the A-Game 10. If you're new to retinoids and vitamin A derivatives, start with the 5, the lowest concentration. Maybe use it for like four or five months. And then when your skin's accustomed to it, you can then move up to the A-Game 10, which is the maximum strength over-the-counter retinal that you'll be able to find so so good and honestly I can't praise this one enough. Now I feel like we're going from the sublime to the retinol ridiculous with the next product that's definitely going in the bottom category and that's the Glossier Universal Pro Retinol. Now I haven't used a lot of Glossier products but I did reach for this one because like I say I love a good retinol in my skincare routine and honestly this just did nothing and it seems to be all gimmicky and marketing over actual good formulation. So this claims to be so hydrating it can be used as a moisturizer and a retinol in one. I have super oily acne prone skin and this still left me feeling stripped and dried. So I definitely think if you have got this in your collection and you are using it, you're definitely going to want to follow with the moisturizer to just keep up your hydration needs. Also, this is formulated with retinol sunflowerate, which is just, you know, a trademark version that Glossier have come up with of selling a suspended lipid based retinoid. It's not terrible. And honestly, the strength isn't that bad. It's not like a mid strength retinoid, but I just don't like the marketing and the way that they're trying to sell this as something innovative and different when honestly, lipid and capsulated retinol have existed for years and you can get much more affordable ones than the higher priced Glossier version. This was a firm pass for me. I never reached for it again and if you love the brand you might want to give this one a go but I just think throughout this video you'll see there are just some better alternatives that will deliver you greater results with less of a lower price point and this no definitely belongs in the lowest category. Now let's come on to Paula's Choice. Now you guys know that I've watched this channel for some time. I'm not the biggest fan of Paula's Choice skincare. They have some good products, but I think overall the brand itself is just a little bit overpriced. The price goes up every single year. And now I think it's gone from being quite a reasonably priced skincare line to ruinously expensive, which is the main reason I stopped reaching for it. However, I have to give it to Paula's Choice. All of their retinols are just absolute perfection. They all belong in the top age to perfection category, but I'd say of all of the ones that I've tried from them, my favorite is the Retinoid 0.3% plus Bakuchol. The reason I love this one is it's actually a little bit different, a little bit innovative, certainly was when they launched it, because this combines a mid-strength retinoid, which is fantastic for beginners, but also for people that maybe just want to use and get the benefits without some of the side effects. But it dials up the results you're going to get by adding Bakuchol. Bakuchol is often said to be like a more gentle 
chemical version of retinol. They're totally different, but they deliver very similar outcomes if used correctly. So by combining the two, you kind of get maximum results with minimum side effects, which I love. If you want to know a little bit more about Bacuchol, how it works, I cover this in a standalone video, which I'll link up there. Definitely want to check out all of the Paula's Choice Retinoids deserve top tier ranking. But for me, it's that combination of retinol and Bacuchol that's my personal favourite from the collection. Now we're moving on to our first okay for some ranking, and that's the Drunk Elephant A Passione Retinol Cream. Now this, maybe like two or three years ago, would definitely have been top tier, top category. But I think that whilst this was innovative and different for the time it launched, now there's just more affordable and better versions on the market. This is a super high, super potent retinoid. And honestly, it delivers great results in terms of anti-aging. But because it's so high potency, you do get a lot of side effects. What we call the retinoid uglies when you first use it. The redness, the peeling, the irritation. And I don't think the formulation is quite good enough to kind of offset some of that. I prefer the Paula's Choice ones that I've just referenced. They do a very similar, like a clinical 1% retinoid, which is very similar to this. But you get fewer side effects with it. And I think the Apassioni Retinoid Cream kind of has had its day. I'm going to put it in the okay for some because I still think, you know, it is a good product and you can't take that away from Drunk Elephant. But you know what? There's cheaper ones available. There's also ones that I think are formulated a bit better to offset some of those side effects. And if you love it, then absolutely continue to use it. In terms of skincare, always do what works for you. But this for me, I think has gone down a category over the last couple of years because there's just some more affordable, better formulated alternatives on the market. Now let's move on to our first like truly drugstore. And when I say drugstore, I mean not only that price point, but is available in physical drugstores. And we're talking the only Olay Regenerist Retinol 24. This is like a night cream with retinol in it. I'm going to put this in the okay for some category middle tier. Now the formulation is amazing. Like the retinol in here is probably the most hydrating base you'll find. So if you're a little bit intimidated by the idea of reaching for a retinol because you've heard about the dryness that it can cause, reach for this product because it'll hydrate you to the gods at the same time as delivering those anti-aging benefits. It's also on fragrance, which is quite rare. Most Olay products come with quite a lot of fragrance added into them. So it's nice that they've listened to that consumer feedback and there is a fragrance-free option. I will just caveat at this point that the Olay formulations do differ territory to territory. So whilst it's fragrance fragrance free here in the UK. That might not be the case everywhere. So, you know, if that's important to you, just check the ingredients list wherever you're based. The reason I'm calling this out in that middle tier is Olay aren't a cruelty-free brand. That matters a lot to me. However, it isn't the motivating purchasing concern for everyone out there. So I'd say if you're looking for cruelty-free, this isn't going to work for you. If that's not something that drives the skincare that you buy, then absolutely this is a fantastic retinol. and Certainly the most hydrating of all the ones I'm going to mention today. It just comes down to your personal purchasing preferences and that cruelty-free status. Hopefully in the next year, all brands will go cruelty-free because I think, you know what, animal testing has had its Day. There are better alternatives, but until Olay catch up with that, this isn't going to be a brand that I personally reach for day in, day out. Now, the next retinol, which I'm so delighted to see on the bestsellers list, is this one the Face Theory Regenacalm Pro. Now, Face Theory do two versions. As with the Geek and Gorgeous, they do a lower strength and then this, which is the maximum strength. Like I said with the Geek and Gorgeous, start with the low strength, couple of months, and then build up to the higher strength. It's just a way of easing your skin into the retinol journey, minimizing those side effects. This is going into the age to perfection top tier category, hands down. I love this product. Not only do you have a really nice blend of retinols, alongside some other fantastic, fantastic ingredients, but it's also a really affordable and accessible price point. Those other ingredients are licorice, which is like nature's natural brightening agent, great for tackling hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration. It's also in here got some vitamin C. You've got some other calming and soothing ingredients. So I think all around, this is more than just a retinol serum. It's kind of like a multi-purpose evening serum in one. And I think if you were trying to just do a minimal skincare routine. You could honestly cleanse, use this as your evening skincare serum, moisturize, go to bed, and you'd wake up with some really great results. I honestly recommend this to so, so many people. And Face Theory are one of my favorite brands, entirely cruelty-free, and they offer some really great formulations. If you're looking for really affordable but top-tier retinols, it's between, for me, this and the Geek and Gorgeous, which is why the two that I got, because I use them interchangeably in my skincare routine. This total holy grail. Now, Olay Revitalift. I think when people say retinol, this is probably the most commonly known one on the market, available internationally at all the drugstores, a really low price point, which is why I think a lot of people gravitate towards them. This, unfortunately, is going to the retinol ridiculousness category, and there's a couple of reasons for that. I fundamentally just prefer the Olay formulation that I called out earlier. I think it's better formulated, it's more hydrating, it has some added benefits, which I don't think you get with the L'Oreal Revitalift. 
L'Oreal like Ole aren't cruelty free. So if you want to go for a really nice drugstore formulation and you're not worried about the cruelty free status, reach for the Ole. I don't think there's ever a reason to reach for this L'Oreal one. That I think he's just you know, a tier below that Ole formulation that I think is just divine. This no, I think, you know, a lot of people like it because of how accessible it is. But I think if you look at the ingredients at the formulation, I think you could just get better elsewhere, including at the drugstore. I'm not saying you have to overpay, but reaching for this just because it's one of the lower price points, I think you're going to be left wanting in terms of the results. And honestly, it's not as hydrating as that Olay one. They're not cruelty free. There's just not a time where I think I would recommend this product over any of the other ones I'm going to mention today. So that's why it belongs in the bottom tier category. Now, when it comes drugstore price, point. I think a lot of people's minds automatically go to The Ordinary. I love The Ordinary as a skincare brand. I think so many of their products will work really well for me. They are drugstore to their core in terms of their pricing and honestly I find myself reaching for them time and time again. That's probably with the exception of their retinols. Now I'm putting all of their retinol collection in the okay for some category. That's because actually the strengths of the formulations are quite good. The price point nobody can argue with. I just find that none of them sink in that well. If you're looking for really rock bottom pricing in your retinoids and still to get those really great results, the odd rate will deliver that for you, but you kind of have to work around the slightly oily texture and film that it leaves behind on the skin. One way you can do that is actually to drop a couple of drops of whichever the ordinary retinol you go for into your moisturizer, mix them in your hand, apply it to the face, and that will kind of help it to sink in a little bit better. That's a hack I learned from Patty, who's a fantastic friend and subscriber here on the channel, and that does definitely work to make these more accessible and easier to sink in. However, because of that and the fact you do have to work around that texture, that's why I'm going to say they're okay for some. Definitely not top tier, but you know what? If you want ridiculously affordable retinols and you don't mind mixing it in with your favorite moisturizer, these could be really good. Now, finally, let's talk the Medicaid Crystal Retinol Collection. This, despite the ridiculous price point, is going in the age to perfection top tier category. And that's because, like with Geek and Gorgeous, this is a retinol based product, which is a little bit more potent than retinols and can be a little bit difficult to find in the skincare world over the counter. Medicaid definitely, definitely have formulated this to perfection. They've put some hydrators in here, some other calming and soothing ingredients, so you get high potency retinoids without actually getting a lot of the side effects that you can get. They also make it super easy for us, the consumer, because they have five different strengths. They say start with this strength and work your way through them to kind of help the skin to become accustomed. It demystifies your retinol transition, and I love them for that. The price point, yes, you do need to gasp and kind of hide from the price point because it's like $100 for some of these, but I think the price point is fair for the formulation and the higher the strength, the higher the price. So the lower strength ones that you start with are a lower price point and I kind of, you know, I applaud them for that because the more potent the ingredient, the higher it cost it is to formulate it. So I don't mind them reflecting that in the price as much. But you know what? That price point is the reason that I stopped reaching for Medicaid and reached for the Greek Geek and Gorgeous instead. Very similar results at a fraction of the cost. But I'm not going to take it away from Medicaid that really led the charge with the retinals. Definitely deserve a place in the top tier rankings when it comes to retinols. And one that honestly, I have loved every time I've tried them. So there you have it guys, a ranking of the best selling retinols out there. What's your take on retinol? Have I missed any of your favorites out? Do you disagree with anything I've said in today's video? Sound off in the comments section below because I love your recommendations and to hear what your thoughts, feelings, and opinions are. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.